Good evening, and welcome to the director's commentary for episode two of the witching season, Princess. My name is James Morris. I wrote the screenplay based on Michael's short story, and I directed the episode. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to be taking you on a beautiful, sensual, intimate journey into my creative subconscious, so <laughs> you're in for a treat. Trust me on that. Ah, the pumpkin. Michael's a vegetable of choice. And that's Michael's favorite witch. He, uh, he loves that witch. He talks to it and, and touches it and yeah, it's, they have something really special. So the soundtrack to Princess was done by Randon Graves, who also did the soundtrack to Killer on the Loose. And when I first saw the finished product of Killer on the Loose, I knew right away I needed him to do the music for this one as well. He has a really unique ability to just look at something visual and just create the perfect atmosphere for it. Um, I've worked with a lot of a lot of composers, and he truly does have a unique ability to to do that. So this house that we're shooting at, the exterior and a little bit of the interior is actually the same, but um, all the different rooms that you see in the film are actually shot through three different houses. Um, the layout of this one just didn't have everything we needed, but we liked the neighborhood, we liked the look, and so we decided to use it for the exterior and build off of that. And Anita Rosenbaum, who plays the mother. She's been a friend of mine for many, many years. And when she heard I was directing this episode, she really jumped at the opportunity to audition. And her chemistry with Emily was such that uh, she definitely stood out in the auditions. And, and uh, we decided to go with her because the two worked so well together. And they got along and they were laughing in between takes. And it was just, it, it uh, created a good environment to, to be creative. Now, a lot of these sequences with Emily in her bedroom were actually shot during the day. Um, we, we didn't have the luxury of being able to shoot till 4 a.m. like we did with the killer because Emily, you know, had to get to bed at a decent time. And so we, we blacked out the windows and we threw some, some background lighting in and just, and just made it look really dark. And so that was something I hadn't done before was film night during day. So that was an interesting experience. All of these shots here are a testament to Michael's commitment to make the episode really, really beautiful. Um, one thing we discussed early on in the creative process of the series was to have him do the visuals for each episode, because obviously Princess is completely different than Killer on the Loose, but they are in the same series and they're part of the same world. And so we thought that connecting them uh, visually would be a good thing. And here's my tribute to the classic horror uh, movies where you wake up and feel the need to go investigate scary sounds. Um, I don't know why people have done it through horror movies since their conception, but you know, oh well, people will continue to do it. With Emily, I wanted to play up her uh, her innocence. Uh, you know, kids are kind of oblivious to, to danger and they oftentimes don't realize what they're what they're getting into and not to get too deeper philosophical with that but just I wanted to embody that um, to have um, Jamie the character's innocence kind of kind of show up now the visuals in this basement sequence are probably some of my favorite in the movie um, this was really a fun scene to shoot. We had the smoke machine going and building atmosphere and and the basement's actually fairly small, but we we had her walk basically around every corner of it to get the shots we needed before she eventually wound up in the uh, corner where the box is located and where Princess is hiding. Now 
Now there's actually a poster up there. There's John Stockton. Um, everyone was keen on having Stockton prevalent in that shot. <laughs> I don't know why, but it worked out. So there you go. Shot in Utah. So there's our Utah uh, tie-in. So the funny thing about Princess or, or the rabbit that we used is uh, we, we bought it off of eBay. And actually, okay, before I get into that, this bear, uh, that's my voice. Yeah, I, I love to cuddle. I decided to do a lot of voice acting in this for some reason. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, Princess, the bunny itself, we, we bought it off of eBay from this lady. And when the package arrived, there was this note basically just saying, oh, I, I've loved this rabbit for so long. I know you guys are going to love it as if she thought I was going to throw it in my daughter's crib or something like that. And uh, I don't think she knew we were going to cut it up and stitch it and shit on it. And Okay, well, I don't think anyone actually shit on it, but unless Michael did or Parker. But if they did, they didn't tell me. So I don't know. They better not have. Both Emily and Anita were champs in this, uh, during these scenes. Uh, it was hot and we had to turn off the AC so that we didn't have that, that humming and it just was stuffy down there. And it was, yeah, they, they stuck through it and we got all the takes we needed. Yeah. See, Emily just has such a, uh, a natural innocence about her. I, I met Emily when she was an extra on another project I did a few months before and I stayed in contact with her mom because her mom was saying that, you know, her daughters love to act and everything. And so when it came time to, to cast for this, I thought, Hey, I, I know these actresses. And so I'm glad I, I'm glad I stayed in contact because she was really was perfect for this. Uh, appeasing children. I don't know why we do it. They prey on our weakness and then they, uh, exploit our generosity so speaking of voice acting yours truly did this uh apparent donald trump voter as well you don't need to ship it to us i had I actually did a couple voices i had a i did a scottish one and i did a an irish one and i did one that kind of sounded like cronk from the goonies but i was worried that might come across offensive so i, just, <laughs> so I forsook that early on these scenes were actually the first day we ever shot. Um, this is the first thing we we filmed was Annie talking on the phone, and I actually stood out in the garage, and I was on the phone with her to help her uh, act naturally to to that conversation. <laughs> Annie's got some uh, some really good reactions throughout this whole thing no she, she's just a talented actress and hey see there's michael's favorite witch again i told you man that that witch he's she holds a special place in his heart some of these earlier shots exteriors were shot during august um and so we were cautious to avoid a lot of the uh, trees and everything because it, it, it does take place in October, November, and so we saved a lot of the visual shots till later in the year. We went back and filmed those last and threw those in right before we released the episode. And uh, Annie kind of got ticked at me here because I kept making her do this scene over and over again, and I think she actually was starting to hurt her feet, but we finally got a, a take that was fluent and natural and everything with the, with the shoulder mount camera. It was a little tricky to get. so grounded I like Emily's reaction here again I just I really liked their uh, their chemistry and there's the uh, the dress on the rabbit <laughs> that dress ended up being a royal pain in the ass throughout the shoot because there were a couple times where we'd film a scene and we're like oh crap the rabbit's supposed to be wearing a dress or vice versa and so we'd take the dress off and that sounded bad but yeah so we would we we did. We took the dress off and had to adjust and go back and reshoot a couple things. And yeah. Now, the movie they're watching here in the next sequence is 
actually the first festival film I ever did. It's called The Astrological Whipping Boy. And it's uh, obviously an awkward comedy. And so I've had some people say, what the hell are they watching? So that's, for those who are wondering, that's what it is. It's just a, uh, <laughs> it's a tribute to me from me. What can I say? And she looks pissed off there. Well, I guess uh, it is pretty enough to be on a cereal box. See, and there she goes comparing Princess to the Tricks Rabbit. I don't know about you guys, but I think that uh, Tricks Rabbit's got nothing on Princess. Just flat and no curves. And Princess is kind of like, you know, got some some curves and some, some buns. and mm. Emily hated that rabbit. Actually, several times throughout the shoot, she'd say, oh, this is so disgusting. I can't believe it. It was, it was funny. She hated it. Almost as much as Michael hated me. So the scene coming up here in just a second when Princess is watching this um, this infomercial, this was actually the first visual scene we conceived when we, when we sat down after episode one to decide what was next. Uh, we came up, My, Michael told us about this uh this idea he had about the, the killer stuffed rabbit. And we developed this, this scene all right off the bat where Princess is watching this infomercial about knives and you can see the TV glow in her eyes. And so that was fun to see that come to life because that was something we'd come up with months in advance. And, and so here's my cameo as the Chef Tony. Um, a way to say F you to all those stupid infomercials that you see at 3 a.m. when you're bored when your pants are off and you have nothing else to do but sit in the basement eating Cheetos and watching late night TV. So I've been there too many times to count, but that's what this is a, a mockery of. And Jordan did such a great job throughout this whole little sequence. There's actually a lot we had to cut out, and it's I, I want to go back and put it all together because this scene really was funny like with all the extra stuff that, that, that you don't see here. <laughs> and it's a bit silly, but I kind of embraced the fact that I was making a movie about a killer stuffed rabbit. And so I was able to convince myself to suspend the rules of reality a little bit to, to incorporate some of the silliness. And here's the dress I was talking about in a second. We, uh, we had to shoot this next scene without the dress because we'd filmed some scenes prior. Anyway, that was a continuity pain in the ass. During these scenes, Annie actually fell asleep a couple times, and I remember I was uh, trying to show her um, how to do some uh, specific visual reaction I wanted, and I accidentally elbowed her in the gut. And Annie, I am so sorry for elbowing, <laughs> elbowing you in the stomach. Uh, she was pissed off, and she kicked my ass for that one, so it was deserved. We all went really out of the way to make sure that Princess's movement was never fully captured on camera. That was by design because we wanted it to always be a little obscure, um, just to kind of keep a little mystery about it. Um, now these scenes right here were actually the last night of principal photography, and these shots did end up going really late. We were trying to finish it all, and we ended up shooting till I don't know, 1.30 or 2 in the morning. It was pretty late. Now these screams from Princess here, um, when I was trying to figure out what to what to do with the sound, I, I, would, I took the sound of a Nazgul from Lord of the Rings and I mixed it with a chipmunk sound effect and reversed it and distorted it. And so that's the sound I came out with. And again, here I wanted to kind of play up the, I mean, it's still a little dark and sick, but just the, the silliness. So she slices off its head and now the rabbit's dead. That rhymed. I don't know if you guys have ever had rabbit before, but man, it's delicious. It's like chicken mixed with crack. I don't know. It's really, really good. And there's the panda. There's a story behind that I'll get into in a second as the ending comes up. But We did have to re-sew Princess's uh, head back on a couple times to do, <laughs> to do some pickups later on. 
that we still needed her for. So this was Emily's last shot right here. After this, she headed home. and She was really tired, but you know what? She stuck it out and did a great job. So the original ending actually didn't have the panda coming up. It actually had the I love to cuddle bear, which you saw earlier in the basement, but it was about two-thirds of the way through filming. We said, why don't we do the panda instead because it's bigger, it's more ominous, and it's been in almost every bedroom shot. Um, so we decided to, to do that. When we got done filming, too, that night, Mike and I took a nap in that bed together. It was, it was a night I'll never forget. He did have the witch with him, but that made it a little bit awkward. So here comes the panda. Um, we actually had some additional endings too that were a couple were pretty sick and disturbing. They involved they involved uh, hinting at Emily's character's death, but we decided to avoid that just because it didn't quite fit. And there you have it. Um, this movie really could not have been made without uh, Parker and Jordan, who just produced the crap out of this thing. They were so ready and willing at all times to, to just to push the production forward. So it'll be fun to work with them in the future. And as I was saying, I was really grateful to have an opportunity to do this. I, it was my first time directing a horror, and uh, I'm really happy to be a part of Witching Season, and I'm pretty excited to... Uh, to work on what's to come. There's a lot more in the pipeline as far as the series goes and even other projects beyond that tie into this. So thank you for joining me and we will see you in the next project.